Hello, this is Craig Mertens. I am the general manager and founder, co-founder of Digital Art Solutions. Welcome to Graphics Academy. Today, I've got a special guest with me, David Gross from Condi Systems. David and I have known each other for about 20, 20 years. Today's class, we're gonna focus on digital printing with, with an emphasis on sublimation printing. And I brought David into the fold for a couple of reasons. Number one, we've known each other for 20 years. And one of the things I really like about David is we share a very similar philosophy in terms of how we care for our customers. And it's always been my experience that the real work starts um, after you become a customer. You know, there's, there's so many companies out there, they're, they're happy to take your money. Um, but they're not so happy to service you after the sale, and and you know they're not necessarily there for you when you're 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 struggling. And and one of the things that people really struggle with, obviously, is graphics. And so I I always appreciate David because he understands the importance of, gra of graphics and shares a similar philosophy. But he also takes really good care of our shared customers, and that's something I very much appreciate. He's got a great staff of people that work with him. I've known some of your people for almost as long as I've known you. So um, it's a pleasure. Um, I'm having you. If you want to say a couple of things about Condi Systems, what Condi so, Systems uh, is all about. One of the things that Craig and I do is we we go around the country and teach many many weeks a year, um, and we're home now, aren't we, Craig? But, yeah, um, we're grounded. So, in my class, which is uh, part of the NBM uh, National Business Media, I teach a Road to Sublimation Success class. And it's real simple. It's it's the three P's. Uh, the first P is the process, the process of sublimation, um, computer, printer, heat press. The second P is product, and product is what you decorate. Product also refers to your artwork. And then the third P is promotion. It's the sales and marketing strategy of, of you selling your products. And unfortunately, you have to do all three. Um, you can't just focus on one and be successful. And so here at Condi, that is our our strategy. That's our, our core principles is helping you with all three. And um, over the years, Craig has, has been an instrumental part, especially when it comes to the, the Corel draw world of, of helping us with that all important um, design. And design really comes down to sort of two things, I think. It's, it's what's in the toolbox, the tools you use for design. And then, of course, it's it's the actual designs. And to me, the reason we're talking together is Craig is, is a very valuable tool in the toolbox to help you with that process through his artwork, uh, which is incredibly large, through his uh, smart designer, which helps Corel uh, be easier and faster to use, more powerful. And so it's putting those three P's together. That is it. And at Condi here, um, that's what we're here. We're here to grow our clients. Anybody can buy a printer, uh, but what we're interested in doing is helping you be successful because if you're successful, that's a win-win. Um, you get to sell products, you get to make money, and hopefully we're on the receiving end. You get to buy products, uh, more blank products to sublimate. And I have known thousands of clients that have been amazingly successful and we hope to make you more successful excellent so i'm going to go and hide your webcam here for a second and then we're going to get right into it i, I hope you guys understand what I, I think everyone understands what david just said but you know the real work starts when you get your equipment and you start getting set up and one of the things that i, I share and um, maybe it's a little slightly controversial, but um, <laughs> nobody cares what equipment you have other than you and the people that sell it to you. They they don't. Your customers don't care about that. You can run around and brag about having a soccer ass 800 printer or the new printer, but that, they don't even know what that means. What they care about is the graphics, and you have to have a quick and efficient way of creating the graphics. Now, in in class today, what we're going to do, we're going to be utilizing CorelDRAW, but bear in mind, there's other ways to create graphics besides CorelDRAW. So what I, what I want to kind of talk about first is, you know, kind of the different programs that people use. And I'm going to have David chime in a little bit with that. Obviously, in our industry, the most popular program in our industry, which is the personalization and decorated apparel industry, is CorelDRAW. And, and for, we have lots of clients that are Illustrator, Photoshop users as well. But Corel is the dominant program. And I, I think there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, number one, there's a, a 
a plethora, so to speak, of add-on programs for Corel in our industry to help automate and simplify things. Um, we've been involved in that world for about 28 years. Um, but also, uh, the vendors have a tendency to prefer Corel because it's easier for people to learn. And the Adobe products are pretty daunting, and there's a, it's a steeper learning curve. And so think about it. If you're a vendor and you're selling somebody a sublimation system, do you want somebody to have to use a program that requires graphic designer training? Probably not. Um, there's also some consumer-based programs that are out there. I'm going to let David talk a little bit about the Sawgrass software and, and what that's all about. And I'll, I'll kind of step aside here for a second, and you can kind of chat about that a little bit. So, yeah, so um, we talk to a lot of people, and the, one of the first things that we want to talk to a person about um, is, um, you know, what graphic software do you do you know? Uh, what's what's in your toolbox? And we'll have people that will say things like, "Well, I have Corel Draw," and I'll ask them, "Do you know how to use Corel Draw?" And they'll say, "Well, no." Um, and I'll say, "Well, you know, we want you to start off with whatever you know." And then at that point in time, you can graduate. So ultimately, if a person says, I don't have any software, nor do I know how to use any software, well, instead of showing you to the door, we ask everybody we could, including Sawgrass many years ago, what's the solution? So ultimately, the good folks at Sawgrass came up with something called Creative Studio. Creative Studio is a cloud-based designer that um, has, we'll call it elementary features, um, that allows you to start printing and pressing and selling, um, you know, 15, 20 minutes after you get your printer. Um, it's very easy. Um, it doesn't have a lot of features to confuse you, um, although they continue to add more features to it. And so it is just a, a great way to get started. Um, interestingly enough, um, in the coming months, uh, Sawgrass is going to use Creative Studio as a portal for you to sell your products. And so we won't go into a lot of details, but for Corel people, all you need to do is export and then import into Creative Studio and you're ready to sell your product through the Sawgrass uh, Creative Studio platform. Um, one of the, I guess, ironic or funny aspects to all this is that this coming platform is, there is no requirement for you to own a Sawgrass printer. You can use Creative Studio as your, as a selling portal um, without even having a sublimation printer at all. Um, and, and basically, they're going to allow you to ride share your printer. How weird is that, Craig? Yeah, so, it, it is pretty weird. And you know, one of the things that's kind of important to you know, explain about Creative Studio, it's designed to print directly to Sawgrass printers. That's its, its exclusive purpose. And so it's not a program you're gonna use for vinyl or DTG because the only way to output the file my understanding is to a Sawgrass printer. Is that correct, David? It, it is. So, um, and and that is one of those, we'll call it catches, in that you design in Creative Studio, um, and then you need to print. Now, again, you will be able to export from Corel into Creative Studio to use use Creative Studio as a selling portal. Um, but um, what I tell people pretty much is that. Um, the the answer to all life's questions pretty much revolves around Corel Draw. If you can become competent with Corel, um, then then it's pretty simple. Your job is to make stuff that people want to buy. Correct. And in my opinion, there is no better tool on the planet than than Corel Draw. Probably the second best, which Craig will talk about, is the Adobe um, Creative. Um, platform and that is certainly great um, you know a lot of people um, live by that and that's great um, but but to me uh, Corel draw is is a better 
solution, especially for our industry. Yeah, I would, I would, I would definitely agree. And I, I use both programs, and I've been using actually the Adobe products a lot longer. I've been using the Corel products. I think it's just the learning curve with the Adobe products is so steep. And also the, the lack of all this third-party software that's available for CorelDRAW um, is, is, is also kind of a defining factor. And if you look at the industry, the vast majority of the, on, the industry education, whether it's online or at trade shows, is going to be Corel-based. So if you're a graphic designer and you're like, I don't get that. I mean, I, I went to school and it's all Adobe. Well, yeah, you went to school and you have a skill set and you're, a tra you're in a, an actual vocation, right? Well, most people just buy equipment. They want to create cool graphics. So kind of my, my thoughts on Creative Studio is for somebody that's just getting started and doesn't want to invest in quote, professional graphics software, it'll give you a good base, but most people are going to outgrow it and want something that's going to allow them to produce graphics at a higher level, things that are a little bit more dynamic. And so what we're going to do is we're going to minimize this here and we're going to, we're going to switch back into Corel. And here, here's, the, here's the good and the bad of it, okay? So you might as well get off the ground. Corel is also a very powerful program. And because it's a very powerful program, there's, there can be a very steep learning curve in CorelDRAW. So it can also be frustrating for a new user. But the, the cool part about CorelDRAW is you're only really using a very small percentage of the program to, the, to do the things that you want to do. And the other thing that's cool about CorelDRAW is there's all these neat add-on programs that take all this complicated stuff and make it simple. And you guys will get exposed to that. So I want to do a couple things Real quick here, I want to talk about um, setting up a, a workspace here real quick. That's one thing I definitely want to do. And I've got, what do I, it looks like I got a universal laser systems color palette open here. We're gonna, we're gonna close that up real quick. And we're gonna talk about just getting set up because that's actually a critical thing. And one of the things that I really appreciate about Condi systems is when somebody buys a sublimation system, they're going to go through a setup process to make sure that the software is set up properly for your your software and for your printer. David, do you want to talk about what's involved in that real quick? So um, over the years, especially for Corel folks, what we want to do is uh, set you up so that the color management method of printing to the printer is done through Corel, and that is the preferred method. Um, our name for that is called Spectrofusion. It's free, there's not a charge for any of this, um, but doing it that way um, is the very best way to get accurate color, because Correct. our uh, ICC color profile is attached directly into the Corel color engine. If you're an Adobe user, same principle there, we attach into Adobe's ACE engine. And so we've worked with Corel for many years to, I guess, we'll call it tune and perfect um, how we print um, using our methodology, um, and, and it works. Um, in addition, um, we would suggest to you, strongly recommend, that ultimately if you're trying to match colors, if you're trying to uh, do Pantone color matching, if you're trying to reproduce spot colors like school colors, whatever, um, you must print a color chart. Um, and in today's world, really we have three color charts available. So under tools, color um, uh, window, color palettes, um, you'll see a bunch of color palettes. The, we've worked with Corel on these issues, you know, so how many versions of Corel are there? A gazillion. But anyway, any rate, the three, now. yeah, the three charts that I recommend you get your hands on, and we can provide all three, um, is the the default RGB chart, um, and we can provide a PDF that you can open in Corel and print it. And in addition, um, with Corel's help, we created a red color chart. It, it seems like of all these years, the biggest issue is um, reds um, because some people are looking for that coke red fire engine red um, you name it um, and so with Corel's help um, there is now a built-in red color palette we provide you the red color swatch chart ready to print and then the third is the mother of all color charts and it's an opinion is what it is and the one that 
today I would recommend is the, the Pantone Go. It's a processed color palette and we can provide the swatch chart for you to print it. It's broken up into small letter size chunks. Um, and, and that's instead of doing it the way Craig is doing it there, because it, it takes up too much room. So we built the charts so they're very compact. So basically what you do is you print the color charts, um, you sublimate them, and then find the color you want, reopen the chart, pick that color, design with that color. And so- Yeah, and I'll, and I'll show you guys the workflow on that. This is just a color chart that we, I just created. Just, there's, a, there's a macro that can create a color chart for from any palette in Corel Draw, and I just created a simple one. But what David did is they created a palette that condenses down to fewer pages. And so, in a in a nutshell, if you print out a chart on, say, it was a tile, and you printed out a chart on a tile, you'll know exactly how those colors are going to print. If you select a color from your tile chart and you recolor the file in Corel Draw, you're going to get accurate color representation of how that's going to print on a tile. The challenge is it's going to be different for a vaporware t-shirt it's going to be different for a mug not not a huge difference but there'll be a difference where you'll see a massive difference is if you're doing colored substrate so let's say you have a vaporware t-shirt that's white and you print out the you know color you know red on that white shirt but when you print that out onto like a light gray or a light blue or yellow it's going to look different so color correction is a really important thing we're going to get into some really good fundamentals of that but the one the one thing that we we i would always recommend which is um and David, if you give me your Go chart, I'll build it into Smart Designer. We've been talking about that for years. It's an easy thing to do. Yeah, I um, saw the chart you just put up said Go Bridge. Is that a new version of the Go I chart? I don't know what I don't know what that was from. It was just something I was playing around with the 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 chart color chart maker, and I just created a chart. But I what, wonder what if I'm that's gonna, what I'm, new, something new in 2020. Um, I, I have so. not loaded 2020 on my machine yet. Yeah, and one thing I was to say about 2020, you're not for color-wise. I don't think you're going to see really any differences between the setup in 2020 versus like 2019 for color. So that that's actually kind of a relief for me. But one one thing I am going to show you guys, which is really important, when the first time you you launch Corel Draw, okay, you're going to get what's called the a, a new document dialog box, and I, and I want to show you just a, a couple little customizations that you can do in Corel. Uh, number one, if you go to Window, or excuse me, Tools, Options, and you go to Corel Draw right here. So Tools, Options, Corel Draw it works exactly the same way in 2019 and 2020, but it's a little bit different. You notice I have a little button here that says Show New Document Dialog Box, and I changed the default behavior in Corel to not show the welcome screen when it launches. I changed it to Start Blank Document, but if I open up a new document, notice it says show new document document dialog. That's actually important. I'm gonna hit the little plus button here and this is gonna pop up and there's some things that you wanna to do to, to change in here. Um, generally speaking, we're gonna recommend an RGB workflow. We're gonna talk about that in a little bit, but there's one little setting that David normally recommends, which is rendering intent right down here. And we're gonna switch that to perceptual and then do you leave the rest of these things alone for sublimation, David? In general, we try to change as few things as possible because um, it, it becomes problematic. So those settings are fine, except for what I would say, um, uh, people who are involved with very high-end professional photographers. And, and for those people, a little bit more of a conversation is needed. Correct. I mean, if you're, if you're doing high-end um, production-oriented photography, you're probably talking about having your monitor calibrated and, and color profiles and things like that, which is, you read a whole book. Yeah, it, it's really that. the input profile that's coming out of their camera. So a lot yeah. of photographers will use a wide color gamut profile like Adobe RGB 98. And if they do, then we need to make sure Corel um, will handle those settings properly. Yeah, so here's all this crazy nerdy color profile stuff in here, which I generally say, hey, don't go in here unless you have been told by somebody that knows what they're talking about to go in here. So generally speaking, we want to stick with the defaults, a couple changes. Um, resolution, we want to keep that at 300 dpi. That's the max resolution for uh, bitmap-oriented graphic, in, 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 and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. 
vector graphics it makes no difference because a vector is conformed is formed of lines and objects. So resolution is is relevant for a vector graphic. But we are going to use That's an RGB. I'm not really workflow. sure what that resolution means because if you open a high res photo, it's not 300 DPI. It's whatever Correct. is the resolution of the photo. So I've often wondered exactly what that means. Yeah, um, I can exp I can actually explain it to you. Let's let's actually be a, a good place to start actually. So what I did is I changed my rendering intent to perceptual, um, and that if you have a color that's out of gamut for your printer, just because you can create the color on your screen doesn't mean your printer can print it. And so if you have a color that's out of gamut, and Corel can actually show you out of gamut colors um, based on your your color profile that you choose, um, it's going to change the way that it treats a color that's out of the range of colors that your your um, your printer is capable of printing. And, and this is the strategy for trying to get as close as we can to that. And David generally recommends perceptual. So we're going to go ahead and click on OK. And I'm going to show you what that rendering thing is all about. In, in Corel Draw, if I draw, draw a box, and I'm just going to grab my rectangle tool, and I'm just going to click from the left edge, and I can draw a rectangle. And if I hold my Control key down, it's going from the center out. And Shift key, it's a perfect square. So we just made a perfect square. And I'm going to fill it with color, so I'm just going to go over here, and I'm I'm using Pantone colors, but we can we'll swap that out a little bit. We're just going to left click to make that pink, and then we're going to right click to make that yellow, so it's an outline. And I'm going to go to my outline tool right here, just double click on it. And we're going to make this super duper fat. We're going to make this super crazy fat outline. We're going to click on OK. Okay, that outline is not vector. If I, if I go to view and I go to wireframe. There's no vector properties to that outline. It's actually a bitmap, and that bitmap has a relative location. And I can actually change that bitmap outline just by going to the outline tool again and saying, I'd like it to go to the outside position. I've changed it. Maybe I want it to go behind the object to the, to the center and behind. So notice it's behind. So that rendering, that resolution is impacting two things, things like outlines, which are rendered effects that aren't actually vector, and then also things like fountain fills. And a fountain fill in Corel is like a, a gradient or a blend. So I'm going to click on the bucket tool here, and I'm going to go over here and click on a fountain fill. And we can go in, if we want, we can move these around, and, and you can change your angle, let's say like 270. And you can even click on this color here, and you can blend to another color. These are rendered effects. They're not vector-based effects. They're bitmap effects. So that 300 is is referring to the highest resolution for a rendered effect, which would be like a fountain fill or an outline. So there you go. That's the answer. Gotcha. Okay. So the 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 tricky part is when you first load Corel, and if you're not familiar with it, it's overwhelming because what people will do, and it's human nature, they'll just start going to all these little menus and seeing all these menus and submenus, and I mean, it's it's nuts. And then if you're doing a new version of Corel, you could go to help, and you go highlight what's new, and then anything that's new, it'll, it'll kind of make in this peachy color here, because um, there's some new things in here, like one of the things they added, which is actually a couple cool things, they added this remove JPEG artifacts function that will remove kind of clutter or noise in a JPEG image or a photo, it's actually really handy. Um, so that's something new. And you would know that because it's it's highlighted in, in kind of that peachy color. So what we're going to do first is we're going to set up a couple color palettes and we're going to set up some defaults. And we're going to go ahead and do that real quick. I'm going to delete this object here. Um, the color palette that would normally be in Corel, and I'm just going to go down here and go to Window, Color Palettes, and I'm going to click on Palettes. And that's going to open a palette browser. And the default palette in CorelDRAW is this one right here. And I'm just going to click on that, check the little box, and I'm going to I'm going to close this palette right here. So this is how Corel is is going to look. This is the default palette. And if I hover my mouse over these colors, you notice these are RGB colors. So what what is, what is RGB? There's a couple kind of easy ways to explain it. So we're going to do this. I'm just going to draw three boxes. Cool Corel trick, if you right click, you can copy. And then if you hit Control D, you guys see what we're doing there? It makes some copies it in the same relative location. So I'm going to click on this one. We're going to click on 100% RGB blue. We're going to click on this one. We're going to click on 100% RGB red. 
we're going to click on this one and that's going to be 100 RGB red, green, blue. Here's your blue. I think that's the right blue or green. Yep, it is 255. So max value for the formula for RGB colors is is actually um I mean these are the these are the colors. So it's 255 is your max value. We're, we're, I'm going to do something a little bit different. We're going to make these circles. So we're just going to make these circles and we're going to put them in clusters. Right here, right here, and I'll show you a neat curl trick. You ready? If you want to drag and drop color from one object to another, here's how you do it. Just hold down your shift key. So I got my hit shift key down. I'm going to click on the object with my shift key down. I'm going to right mouse click and I can drag and drop. Bam. Okay. So this is how RGB works. RGB models the way the human eye works. And so in your eye, you have you have cones in your eyes, and that transmits light to your brain, and that's how you interpret colors. So somebody that's colorblind, um, usually one of their cones isn't working properly, so they don't see the full range of colors. So I was talking to a friend of mine that's colorblind. He says, you know, I kind of see, he says, grays and reds are really tough for me. I can't really tell them apart. And so the, the way that RGB color works, it, it works, it, it works the way the human eye works and it's subtractive. So white in RGB is 255, 255, 255. It's all the lights are turned on. 100% of, of the lights are turned on. When all the lights are turned on, it's white. In CMYK colors, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit, it's if all the lights are it, it, it is, it's not subtractive, it's additive. We're adding colors to each other to create colors. Where with RGB, we're actually, we're taking colors away. So in RGB, the value zero, zero, zero is black. All the lights are off. 255, 255, 255 is all the lights are on and that was, that's what creates white. And so in your, in your monitor here that you guys are all staring at, in your monitor, there's light emitting diodes. They're in clusters of three, just like here on the screen and they're in various intensities. And those various intensities are what's creating the, the, the image on your screen. And so the human eye actually replicates that. And so the advantage of RGB is this crazy wide color gamut, literally millions of colors. It can create millions and millions and millions of colors. Most Pantone colors, including the, the Pantone solid coded chart, as well as the Pantone Go chart, which we're gonna talk about, will also have RGB formulas. They're basically RGB formulas with names. And Pantone was really, really smart to name those and trademark them. And that means they get to charge Corel Corporation and Adobe and lots of other people um, uh, for using their, their names. So if you use Pantone 123, you gotta pay Pantone a license to do that. Corel has to pay them a license. So CMYK colors are a lot different. So let's open up a CMYK palette and we're gonna do these as squares this time. We're not gonna do them as circles. And we'll go over here and we're gonna go to a different palette. And in Corel, you can have multiple palettes open. So we're gonna open up the CMYK palette. Really doesn't look diff any different, but the formulas are different. So we're gonna come over here. You notice the green looks a lot different. And you notice the red actually looks a lot different. These colors look different because these colors are kind of out of gamut compared to these colors. We can't produce these exact colors in CMYK. If, if I do, um, we'll do cyan there, we'll do magenta here, we'll do yellow here, we'll do black here. K stands for black, okay? The way CMYK colors work is if, if, if you, in the old days of a printing plate, you were printing on a, like a Heidelberg printing press and you had white paper and you had four plates. And if you wanted to make green, you put little dots of yellow on top of little dots of the magenta. That's how you create green. So we don't have the wide range of colors in CMYK that we do in RGB. And here's where it gets confusing because you know what carts are on your printer? David, what color carts are on your printer? What, what do you mean carts? What, when you look at your Sawgrass printer or your DTG printer, what are the cart colors and the cartridges for your oh, printer? cyan, magenta, yellow, black. Right. Um, so people just assume that we want to use those colors, a, a color so, model that's... So it's a complicated discussion, but the very short version of it, Craig, is that the the... PC gods, Bill Gates and Steve Jobs, the interfaces that they placed in Windows and on the Mac, like QuickDraw, they're really RGB only. They don't support direct CMYK 
uh, they do it very poorly. So in order to, to match the color gamut that is possible with the inks, you need to push RGB data to the print driver and then the print driver then takes the RGB, converts it to the device space of the printer, which is CMYK, to achieve the maximum color gamut. That's the best explanation I've ever heard of that, David. And I'm going to steal that and add it to my, my repertoire. Um, and the other, the other aspect of that, I think that's really important, is think about it like this. A printing plate is analog and just can take dots of ink and put them on other dots. Where a printer is digital, it can do much more complex things with a printhead and a computer-driven driver than a piece of paper with dots of yellow or, or blue ink. So the, the moral of the story is we want to use RGB colors because they're gonna be brighter and they're gonna give us a, a better gamut. And maybe you guys can see this on your screen. We're gonna find out, but I'm gonna take this little red dot and I'm going to click on my color wheel in Corel, and we are going. Now they've moved all this stuff around on me in in uh, in in uh, 2020 a little bit. So I'm going to switch my color model to CMYK, and as soon as I did that, the color shifted slightly. And these are this is nowhere near as bright. And and I bet you on the green it's going to be even worse. So on the green, if I go over here and go to color viewers and switch that to CMYK, I bet you it's going to yeah, it looks terrible. So Moral of the story, RGB, we want bright colors, and the Pantone Go and the Pantone um, matching system color palette are going to deliver the goods for us. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to palette here. Yeah, Craig, just one comment while you're doing that. So those palettes are actually not RGB nor CMYK. They're actually LAB based. So Correct. confuse the issues a little bit more. Um, behind the the hood, if you open the hood of Corel and Photoshop, it's it's not any of those based. It's actually CIE LAB based is the color space, and that way it maximizes the color space no matter what you're doing. So what I'm doing right here is I'm going to open up two palettes. I'm going to go to Pantone. Um, go. Do you you normally recommend the coded palette, correct? David? Correct. Correct. So we're going to we're going to click on that one. And then the other one's a little trickier to find. Um, we are going to go to they keep hiding this on me. It's tricky yeah, to it's find the um, RGB, but it's gosh. Um, Let's I'm, see here. Previous used to be under years. previous version palettes. Um, and it's just the solid coded. But hold on. We're going to back up here. OK, uh, so if you are there. Go. Go to process. It's right under process. Um, and yeah, right here. Previous version, well, right here. I, I'm see, I'm talking about the um, the red down there. Oh, the red really palette. Cool. Okay, yeah. Okay, cool. Let's open that one too. So I'm gonna go to. I'm gonna open. Um, I think it's under RGB. Um, well, any anyway. rate. Yeah. Well, yeah. well. Let's let's see here under RGB. Um, Well, I've, I've got a document on our website. Okay, cool. Yeah. Download it. But so uh, you, you, the the two palettes I opened up the Go palette over here, and um, the other the other palette that people will do would be the previous version palettes, and they would usually do like a solid coded palette. Um, but I'm trying to find out would they move this on me in in Corel Draw 2020. Kind of looks like they might have. So we, I'll show you a neat way to do. It. If you're running our Smart Designer software, you don't have to pay any attention to that is in the smart designer docker just go down here and, and we have all palettes listed right here and then i'm just going to click on that and just say solid coded and it's going to end okay and it's going to put that palette up there so we're running two palettes and kind of the main distinctions and the difference between these if you're working in corporate america and arizona state university you're doing work for them and their gold is pantone 123 okay Corporate America, teams, schools, port, sports, thread manufacturers, people that do vinyl, um, graphics, um, ink manufacturers for screen printing ink, all those folks have Pantone numbers that they use to designate the colors. And the, there's also numbers in the Go palette too. And, they're, and their numbers are very similar in the Go palette. They're a little bit different numbering system. So that's how we communicate color from, from company to production by saying, hey, I need Pantone 123 for my gold, okay? So what's the advantage of the Go chart is it's a broader, it's more modern. It's not this old school Pantone chart. 
but it's got a broader spectrum of colors for sublimation. Anything that you want to add to that, David? Yeah, so the, the, the advice is very simple. If you're trying to match Pantone solid coated colors, which is corporate America, get you a Pantone book. You must have a Pantone book to play the game. You cannot play the game without a book. Then you're going to print the big color chart, the go chart. You're going to sublimate it. You're going to go grab your book. You're going to look up the color that the client wants. You're going to hold it up against the chart, find the match, reopen the color chart, uh, the go chart on your computer, go to that page row column, click on that color, design with that color. It's that simple. Yeah, so let me show you some context on that. Um, I'm going to go in and, and just recolor these with some colors from the, the Pantone chart here. I'm just going to recolor these and we'll just use just kind of some, not necessarily random colors, but some kind of fun colors and I'm just going to go pick some colors out here. If, if I click on this color right here and I double click on the little bucket, if I go over here to color viewers, um, this is going to, it's going to change the color. If I've, if I've gone to a CMYK variation of this, this color is going to change. If I go to RGB, it's the same exact color because it's just, there's the RGB formula. This color just has an RGB formula, that's it. And the RGB formula for this Pantone color is 23 red, 138 green, and 192 blue. If I switch to a CMYK color, it's, it's not gonna look anything alike. And you can act, you'd actually be able to see that down here in the box, but um, it's a little bit tricky on, on on this size monitor. So once we have the color set up, what we wanna do is we do wanna set a default color palette that's gonna be used for features. And let me give you an example of that. If, if I was gonna do a blend in here right now and I click on the little bucket and I was gonna use a fountain fill to do a blend, it's automatically gonna to default to um, whatever my default color palette is. My default color palette that I've set up is Pantone Matching System Solid Coded. And the way you do that is simply clicking on the little right arrow here and set that as a default. If I wanted to set the Go palette as my default, I would go over here and do the same thing, palette set as default, and now that palette is my default. So not, not as you notice this one isn't. So anytime I go over here and click on like the fountain fill and I wanna change colors, the colors now are gonna be the Go palette. And so that's you know kind of an important thing to do to set up a default color. Now, when you're when you're working in Corel, we're actually going to do some. I'm going to do it like a sample design and kind of show you just like a workflow. What what David is talking about is printing out a chart in in our Smart Designer add-on software for Corel Draw. We have all the common palettes right here, so they're just kind of at your your fingertips. But also we have the charts right here, and this is what I was kind of teasing David that all he's got to do is give me his Go chart, and we'll build it into Smart Designer. So if if I go down here and I click on this and I go to um, Pantone Solid Coded Chart. Okay, there's two versions. One is multi-page, and this one right here is single page. And, and this is gonna take a while for this to load. The reason that we did a single page version of that is so if somebody's doing like a, a, a sublimated t-shirt or a tile, they can print the whole chart out on a, a tile. So that's the whole that's the whole enchilada right there um, in Pantones. And one of the things that's nice about sublimation, you can print really fine detail because guess what? There's all the colors underneath. So here's their names. Um, there's 100% fills. And so think about it like this. If you had a design and you printed out this chart onto your and you went to the chart and you picked the color from the chart, if you recolor that image in that color you picked from the chart, it's gonna be exactly the way it printed on, on the chart. You can't mess up. It's just impossible to mess up. So, so this Craig, for, doing, go ahead. Great. so in the world of sublimation, this is sort of the catch. I don't recommend people ever print the Pantone solid coated chart. Never, 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 never. And the reason is because it will not match what the book says. The book is the gospel. The Pantone book is the only thing that counts. And by the time you print and sublimate, you're not matching the Pantone solid coated colors. That's why you have to print the Go chart, which is an RGB chart, you know, in in reality, and then you're going to use the book to find the Correct. color. So yep. the Pantone Solid standard has improved over the years by adding more colors, but it does not have enough colors to paint the rainbow. As you Correct. mentioned, you need a bigger color chart. So if, if 
if you're doing, say, embroidery or you're doing vinyl graphics or screen printing, or, or in, not necessarily DTG, but those processes, you're going to use a Pantone solid color chart because those are the standards for those processes. Typically for digital printing, like um, sublimation or white toner printer, like an Oki Data printer or DTG, Go is going to be a better choice for you because it's got a wider range and it's more modern. It gives you the, the full, like David said, the color of the rainbow. But there's something that he said there that's very, very important. If you have not professionally color calibrated your monitor, which in order to do that, you have to, Pantone sells this little you know, graphics monkey thing that you put on your computer and um, screen and you can calibrate your monitor so it's fairly accurate. The physical chart that you buy at an artist supply store, which is about $160, the physical chart is gonna be different from the one you print. So the important thing is to do this. If the color, the customer specifies Pantone 123 on the physical chart, okay, the one that you bought in the store, just take that color and get it to the closest color that's on the one that you printed. It might be 123, it could be 126. And so that's the, the very best way to match colors, the very, very best way. Now, something that's important is in the in a context of a workflow of swapping colors out, what we would wanna do is if we were doing a template, and we'll come down here and we'll go to select template, this is a smart designer feature. So if we were going to do a design and let's say we wanted to do a first responder type of design, something like that, of that nature. And I would go into one of our template categories. I'm going to go into our graphics plus templates. These are our templates and clip art images that are distributed to your computer every single month, kind of like a podcast. So if you're a, a member of our graphics plus membership program and your membership is in good standing, you will have access to the Smart Designer software in Corel. You'll also have access to our Rhinestone Designer Vinyl Graphics program. And you'll also be getting new artwork every month. And so I'm going to go over here into a category. And let's see here. Show you some, some fun categories to kind of play around with. So here's some business artwork. Um, here's some... Uh, there's some lacrosse artwork, here's some spring break artwork, but what I'm interested in is this nursing category right here, okay? So I'm going to go down here, I'm going to pick the design that I want, I'm going to pick this one right here, and I'm just going to double click on it and the design is going to pop up, okay? So this design has popped up and now we can add a line of text, um, we could change the copy, it's just a matter of just going over here to edit text, and I'm just going to change this to heroes. I'm going to hit H or T for title case, and I'm going to change wares to wear, heroes wear scrubs. Okay, so there's my design. Now I want to do something that's more dynamic and colorful. So if I went to my color chart and I picked out the color I'm trying to hit, then in the Smart Designer software, all I'd have to do is just go down here to where it says modify colors. The colors and the designs will be displayed. And I could say, I'm just going to pick just that color right there, and I want to swap it. I don't have to select anything. I want to swap it. I will pick my chart right here. So I would pick the, whatever specific chart that I want to pick in the software. So if I wanted to do um, RGB chart or Pantone chart or whatever chart I want to do, all your charts are right over in here. What I'm going to do is just pick the new color. So I'm going to pick this red, 032 red. And we're going to click OK, and it's going to close set that up to 032 red. Now on the, the gray color, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna say swap colors and we're gonna kind of go the whole USA route. And so we're gonna pick like a bright blue here. And there you go. So now now at this point we're done. And doesn't mean that we can't go in here and, and manually modify this. We can still go over here if we want. And if we wanna select a layer and, and the way our clip art is set up, it's all set up in layers. And you wanted to make that like a light blue um, or maybe a shade watch. I'm just going to click on the little bucket here. And we're just going to make this a shade of that blue to lighten it up. Boom. There you go. I mean, you're you're done. And so being able to quickly access a template, create a design, get it in front of a client, that's a huge, big benefit. But getting the colors right is another benefit. Now, on, on this design, we can go crazy with text effects. So if we're doing sublimation, these are um, solid colors, which is fine because it does look cool, but um, we could have picked a version of that template that was set for vinyl, which is a simplified version. 
we picked the one that intentionally that was more colorful. Um, we could have picked a two-color version if we were, say, sending out for a heat transfer. But we can we can certainly dress this file up. And so some of the things that we can do is if I wanted to dress this up and maybe give this more of like a, a 3D type of effect, I can just click on this text. Actually, we'll get rid of that drop shadow. We can just click on that text and select it. And then in the Smart Designer software, what I would do is I'd go over here to Effects. And once I get into Effects, then we can have all kinds of fun with this. So I'd go down here to Effects, and I'm going to go down here to Outline Effects. And we're going to say, OK, are we going to print this effect? Are we going to affect this? Uh, do this effect in color? If we're going to print it, we're going to go down here. And these are all printable effects. And I'm going to use the color and the graphic. And these effects are all printable. So if I wanted to do like this kind of cool little blend effect right here, I can just click on it, and it's going to do that blend effect. And every aspect of this can be edited. So if I click on that drop shadow, all my drop shadow functionality is going to be right here on the property bar in Corel. So if I wanted to clear that shadow, I could do that. And there's, I don't have to know the 50 or 75 automation steps to create that cool effect with all the layering and shadowing and moving and blending and adding and deleting. I don't have to know that. Just push a button. If, if I don't like the effect, I can just undo it and go back to the original. Now, if I was going to do this in vinyl, I'd do it differently. I'd go over here to cut, and then I'd pick a cutting effect. And I'd say, hey, do I want to knock the white color out? And I go, yeah, I do. And do I want to remove any intersecting paths so we don't have color on top of color? Yep, I do. And we're just going to hit apply. And this is set up. And these are layers. So from here, um, you know, Corel's been nice enough to create a color palette for me right here. Do you guys see that as I've been creating the design? Or we could do that little trick we showed you before is shift key, drag and drop color to color. So adding, you know, things to like effects to designs for our clients is, is kind of second nature. And something that we could do in this file that'd be kind of fun would be to put a pattern fill in here. And so we're going to do that. We're going to, we're going to add a pattern fill. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to go over here to quick fills right over here. And we're going to go to power clips. And these are all fill patterns. And we'll come over here and we'll go to kind of bonus patterns. I don't know what I want to put in there. Let's we could do some polka dots. We could do, uh, I don't really want to do leopard print. We could do a plaid. Polka dots wouldn't actually be bad. Polka dots might look cool in there. Let's see what it looks like. So yeah, let's just jam some polka dots in here. Why not? We're just going to click on that. We're going to jam some polka dots in there. Love it. That's super fun. I think that's really cool. And here, we're going to go even crazier. Are you ready? So watch this. I'm going to say extract contents. Here's my pattern fill right there. So I'm just going to copy that to my clipboard. We're going to undo that. And then I'm just going to paste this pattern fill over here. This is what you have right here. That's your pattern fill right there. So you can just keep that as a second object, or better yet, just click on this, and then just click on the pattern fill here too. And I actually dig it. I think it's fun. What do you think, David? Looks nice. OK, let's do one little trick. I'm going to grab my dropper, and we're going to select that color, and then we're going to drop that in there so now it kind of matches up. So. <laughs> I think it's a really nice looking design. I think we have one little tweak we want to do on it, which is I think I want to make this pink right here. Boom. So what where, what does this go on now? So David, what are some of your favorite products to sublimate onto? Well, um, certainly drinkware is is probably the the all time favorite. Um, you know, and you know you've got many choices. From there, it depends on the market for this kind of thing. Um, you could do all sorts of things from, um, um, you know, signage kind of products, um, dry erase. Um, um, it depends on uh, again, again, too broad a question, I guess, for for an engineer like me. Um, but certainly, you know, in this day and time we're looking at recognition kinds of products. Um, and so, you know, coasters would be good things. Um, um, but, but sort of, sort of very, very broad, you know, um, what, what I would do, cause I'm the, I'm not the engineer, I'm the sales guy. This is what, this is kind of the way I'd approach. I would create a grouping of products that was production friendly and profitable that I could make money on. So I'd create a grouping of products. 
I would present them as a group and I would let the customer say, okay, we're gonna do this in a mug. We have a mug that you can do. We have a clipboard you can do. And we have a vaporware 100% polyester t-shirt you can do. Um, you can pick out any of those products. Um, we have a bundle, so if you do all three, it's a little bit of savings. And so the, the idea of what we want to do is we'd want to be able to get this in front of the customer. That's, that's the most important thing. And so the way we're going to do that is we're going to make a virtual sample. And that's a feature in the Smart Designer software. So I'm going to close up the like, quick fills thing, and I'm just going to go into Smart Designer. And we're going to, we're going to go over here, and we're going to say virtual samples. And we're going to click on that, and we're going to click on virtual samples and this little window is gonna open, okay? So what what we want is, it doesn't have to be super high resolution product photography, but we want product photography. And we wanna mock up the product on the actual photography. So one of the things that Condi has is they do have, for quite a few of their products, they do have product photography. D David, is, do you make that available to end users? We do. Um, so as, as soon as you place your order, um, in your order history, you'll see the download links for the templates. The templates are a zip file that have a bunch of different versions in it, like a CDR, like a PNG, that kind of thing. So regardless of what program you're using, there's going to be um, a, a template for your application. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I've just got a, an image here of a ceramic mug, and I'm just gonna simply click on that mug and we're going to mock this product up onto a mug. Okay, so we have it mocked up onto a mug now. And now in the world of sublimation, if there's white in the graphic, the print driver is going to ignore the white and that's going to be the substrate coming through. If that makes some sense. Yeah. And if I, if I wanted to make that look, you notice I can sample the color from the actual, I'm going to use the dropper here. We can actually sample the color from the background too if we wanted to make it look more like it was transparent. Do you guys see how I did that? I grabbed the dropper, I clicked on the light area and just dropped it into the graphics so it looks more like the background of the mug. So we're gonna, we're gonna keep that one there. I kind of like that. And we're gonna add it to a proposal sheet. So I'm gonna go over here and we're gonna get rid of that little dude here and I'm gonna pick out a proposal sheet style here. Just to, probably just a simple one I'm thinking. We'll just do a simple little basic proposal sheet here. So we're going to add that to a proposal. And then we're going to do this on a t-shirt too. So we're going to add that out onto a t-shirt. And let's pretend for a second that we have Okie Data white toner printer that can print onto dark shirts using a transfer product. David, do you want to explain what that, how that all, all works? Yeah, so... Um... When, when people think of sublimation, they think of polyester. And, you know, today I would say poly, uh, sublimation really has not made the turn yet to, to be a good solution for cotton. So in, in the cotton world, you're really down to screen printing or the digital version would be a DTG or an Oki white toner printer. And an Oki white toner printer to me is is a better solution because it's essentially no maintenance, uh, no print head, um, and it's a very flexible Swiss Army knife because whatever transfer paper you're printing on determines what the printer is actually going to do. And so basically the Okies either have four colors or they have five. The four colors are CM, Y, and then W for, for white are there versions that have CMYK and then W. Um, and basically, you create your artwork and then you print it and the printer actually puts down white onto uh, transfer paper like the Forever Low Temp and then you press it onto the shirt. The Oki is flexible because you can you could press onto a piece of black polyester fabric or black cotton or blend, there's no pretreatment. Um, it, it's just a, uh, to me, it's a more flexible solution. Um, and uh, these printers now have been uh, very successful. Yeah, when, what my, my whole thing on the Oki data printers, I, I, for, for just purely from a self-centered point of view, Oki data printers are a boon for digital art solutions because people like the graphic that you see on here, 
our customers can print that on a purple shirt or a black shirt, and they don't have to have a DTG printer or get screens made. The, the challenge is on the Oki data printer is who you purchase it from. And you know, one of the reasons that we recommend Condi is I know that Doug DeWitt over at Condi, I don't know that there's anybody that's a better expert on that. And they, they, Condi can train you. They will not steer you wrong. They will tell you, hey, listen, if you're gonna do this process, you have to purchase the, the, the RIP software, which is a, a specialized um, um, driver software so that you get better quality, that you get a softer hand better wash durability. And I was talking to Doug at the trade show not too long ago, sometime last year, and I asked him, you know, why is it all these other people that buy these printers really struggle? And he said, Craig, you know, if you don't train somebody on how to set up the artwork properly, they're really going to struggle with this. And and Condi just does a great job on that. Do you, do you want to explain why the RIP is so important, David? So we've been doing this a long time. And, you know, basically, Oki makes a good mechanism. But when it comes to actually building, taking a Corel file and building it into the file we actually send to the printer, um, there is a need for what we'll call a software rip. And the software rip uh, that we recommend is the forever rip. And it basically allows you to customize how the the actual print file is is built according to what you're going to do with it. So, for instance, traditionally too much white toner is put down if you simply just print to the printer. If you have too much white toner, it's it's going to be a, a wash nightmare. It's not going to wash right. Um, so the rip does fancy things like it micro perfs the the toner so that um, you have um, good washability the water's going back and forth through the shirt so it does all sorts of fancy stuff and every day it gets better um and so we won't sell an oki without the rip it's just a an essential component to do your design in corel and then send it to the rip um, so that when you push print that file is prepared for um the best washability, the lowest usage of toner, um, and also uh, proper color. So same color rules apply for sublimation. Color chart is, is needed, um, but but again, it's just essential. So just like sublimation, there is a, a definite formula for success, and you know, God help you, if you just simply buy an Oki and you expect to be successful, I don't care how smart you are, um, the chances of you figuring it out, quote, quote, um, and making it work is, is relatively low. So we're here to help you make money. And that's why we have a very defined method of, of getting you started. For instance, we were gonna have our White Toner Academy um, next month and um, you know about a hundred people here and it was not it's not a sales thing it's for people that already have printers um, but they want to learn more they want to learn to do it right so we do get a lot of people who call us they bought their printer from somebody else they really need help going um, and so that was the white toner Academy was was get gonna get them going we'll do that we'll just have to pick um, a date in the future when when um, when all this is going to be behind us. Yeah, and David, I, I appreciate that that what you just said because it's so true. And you know, when, it, typically when I talk to a client that has the Oki system, and if they're struggling or having a hard time, I'll, I'll always ask them where they bought it from. It's never a Condi customer. And I will I will typically tell them I say, listen, you are not married to that vendor for your paper and your rip and your, your you said I, I, you should call up Doug at Condi, tell them you're struggling and, and have Condi take over all the supplies and the training for you. And when I've done that, clients have been really successful and you know, just, you know, I'll just say it this way. I, I personally think it's unethical for somebody to sell a Oki data technology printer without some enhanced rip software. I just, you know, and some of the companies will do that because it's less expensive. They can be more competitive. 
but it, it what is it to be more competitive when your customer struggles and they don't get the results they want so i'm glad glad you mentioned that i what i did while you guys were all while doing that i just created a, a little virtual sample here i'm gonna go ahead and uh and delete this one i'll just do the mug next and i'm just gonna all i did is pick a layout we could just pick out a layout i'm gonna do a custom layout for this one and the re reason i mentioned that is in our proposals feature that we add to corel draw smart designer you can create your own page layouts it doesn't have to be our stock layouts and i i actually set up a, a an option here I, I had it put a watermark on there you guys like that so we put a watermark on here and the watermark says thou shalt not steal and so this is how you would get that file over to your customer just like this and so what i'm going to do so i'm going to remove the watermark here and i want to take a zoom in on the, the graphic here and i'm going to go to view and i'm going to go to wireframe do you guys see that that's a bitmap so there's a setting in our virtual samples feature right here and that setting says convert blanks to bitmap it converts the product blank to a high resolution, kind of a medium resolution bitmap. And, and the reason we do that, so if you don't do that, and you have a PDF file, there's there's naughty people. This is 200 DPI. There's naughty people that will steal your artwork. And this is not print quality. What's on here is not print quality. So they could steal it and they could try printing it, but it's, it's viewing quality. But if they try printing that, it's going to be horrible. So it looks fine like right here, but it's not print quality. So that's a little security thing that we do. Um, if we were going to do it the other way, um, and we'll we'll go back and do the mug again. I think we got the mug set up in there. Yep, we do. Um, I'm going to uncheck that box, okay? And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to create a proposal with the mug, but I uncheck that box. And one of the neat things about this feature is super easy to add your own product blanks. Um, and it's just a matter of a click. We'll, we'll add one real quick here so you can see how that works. Um, so this is the real live vectors. So they could steal that artwork. So that's that's not so cool. So what we'll do is I'm going to take this right here, and we're just going to make a little PDF file of, I don't know which one I'm going to do. Yeah, we'll just make a little PDF file of this real quick. Probably should change my page size down to letter. And all I'm going to do is a little button right here. It says publish to PDF. And I'm going to go ahead and just put that up in my Graphics Academy downloads folder. And we'll call this um, Heroes Wear Scrubs Mug Concept. And we're just going to hit save. We're going to create a PDF. And if you're on the live webcast, you've been doing this for a while, you know what we do here. I'm going to go and drag and drop it into the handouts so you guys can download that and then if you're not on the live one what we'll do and this has got the real vectors in it so you guys can print this so what we're going to do is we're going to come down here i'm going to go to handouts oops downloads and heroes wear scrubs starts with an h so i'm going to throw that into handouts and then i'm going to show you guys how that are on the recording how to get it what you're going to do is just go to digitalartsolutions.com. You're going to click on Graphics Academy. And you are going to click on Graphics Academy Handouts. And it's going to be here. And let me try something here. Let's see here. Yeah, we're just going to drag and drop. Boom. Oh, you got to hit it right. Otherwise, it'll just preview. I'm just going to drag it and drop it on this document right here, and it's going to upload. So that's going to upload. So it doesn't matter what. If you have any program that can open up a PDF file, you can go and import that into your file. And all you got to do if you want to access the graphics, super simple. Just It's right here. Just go and zoom in here. You can ungroup this if you need to. Here's the graphic. And this is vector-based right here. And you can size it up or down. It's pretty, you can make it as big as you want or as little as you want. You guys can print that all day long. So I'm going to challenge one of you guys to print it and send it. You can send the photo of the printed product over to Craig at digitalartsolutions.com. So that that's a, a very typical workflow. So getting that color part is is really important. The other thing that people are dealing with is in, is photos, and you know photos that we can do probably a whole nother class on photos. But one of the things that I, I always like to mention with Corel is that Corel actually has um, really good functionality 
um, for photo editing. It's pretty terrific. You guys have been on the webcast. Cupcake's been really good today, but um, she's our, our um, Jack Russell Chihuahua terrorism dog and um, that we inherited from my mother-in-law. And, and, and we have a kind of a love-hate relationship. Uh, it's mostly love with just a little bit of hate. Um, this, this photo here pretty much just sums it up. And, uh, and she's my coworker now, so you know, she loves to just come in and join us on the webcast and put her two cents in. So Corel has very, very powerful functionality for doing photo editing. So you have the ability, you can go in and crop photos. You have a cropping tool. So, um, you can knock the background out of this if you want. So I can just double click on that. If I want to do basic color correction and editing, I can go over here to, um, they always keep moving this around on me. Color Craig, transform. Have you done a little course in removing backgrounds? Yeah, we actually, I love to be able to teach that. We might do that as an extra little thing at the end of the class. So adjust image adjustment lab. You guys see that? Adjust, they hit it. And it's a shame because that's such a great feature and the way they hit it now, people don't find it. Uh, but what you can do now is I'll do a split screen right here. And what I can do is if I want to adjust my contrast, I can use the little white point here to click on a, a light or the lightest point in the graphic and then click on the black and click on darkest point and that'll adjust my contrast. Or I can go over here to start moving the contrast button around here, probably reduce the contrast a little bit. Um, I can take a snapshot of this. So I just click on the little photo. So there's a snapshot. If I want to brighten it up, let's see if we can brighten it up here. Take a snapshot of that, and then you can compare them. So if you click on that, you can see the live preview. I'm just going to go to full preview, but you can click on that to see the live preview. And I actually like that one better. When you're all done, you just click on OK. You're done. So you know, you've got all these wonderful functions in Corel, but one of the things that we do is we do photo templates. So if you want to do a photo template, this is kind of fun, is if you go back over to your templates function in Smart Designer and you click on templates and you click on select artwork, if you have our advanced graphics collection, we have, there's six basic collections that we have. We used to have 87 and we consolidated them down to six, but the one the ones that's in our advanced group is called photo templates. And so if I go down here to photo templates and we click on this template right here and we click on that and we can go and change the, the text if we want, but I'm, what I'm going to do is just change the art. So I'm going to change art. You notice it says power clip right here. So I'm going to say, I'm going to use the clip art browser to find that file and I'm just going to use my browse function. Our clip art browser is going to show all the digital art solutions art, but you can also browse through your own artwork. And it's it's a lot more sophisticated than um, the, the Corel Draw import function. And you also have keyword search capability, which is pretty awesome. And I'm going to have it go through all supported formats, not just vector or bitmap. And I got to find my photo folder. Let's see here. It's probably going to be under let's see here dogs right here so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to replace the object what I'm going to do is I'm going to power clip the object and we have a little setting right there that says power clip it and so what that's going to do is mask the file into that location and then what I can do is I can right click on it you guys watch me right clicking edit power clip I can make it bigger or smaller. I can reposition it, do pretty much whatever I want. I can do that color correction thing right while I'm in here. So I can still go over here to object or effect, where is it? Effect, adjust, image adjustment lab. So we can still, we can actually still do that right in the file itself. And then when we're all done, all we got to do is hit finish. Boom. And then from here, we can start playing around with colors. So what I would probably do in this one is I'd grab my dropper and I'd sample this probably this blue out of the graphic right here. And let's see, we'll sample kind of one of these blues. Um, actually, the easier thing to do, just be color it. I don't really have to sample it if I don't want. You can just click on this and just color it. You don't have to do that. And let's see, we'll make this a little bit more dynamic here. 
well, we'll make that blue too. But let's soften it up a little bit and I'll show you kind of a neat little effect you can do. If, if you click on these in your Smart Designer, you got all these cool digital effects. So we're gonna go over here to effects again. And I've just showed you guys a fraction of what Smart Designer can do. But the one effect that we're gonna play with here is I could do a glitter vinyl effect on there if I wanted to. Let's see here, quick effects. And I'm gonna do a soft bevel. We're just gonna add a soft little bevel effect to that just to give it a little bit of dimension. And so now it's got kind of a 3D shadowing in there. And David, why is it better to print like blended colors versus solid colors and sublimation? What's your thoughts on that? Which colors? Instead of just doing solid colors all the time, I, I like doing blended colors and, and graduated fills and things like that for sublimation. What are your thoughts on that? I don't know. Um, I hadn't really thought about it. Um, certainly it's, it's, you know, what you're after. That's why I love just printing the RGB chart, that small one, because those are your, your very basic, brightest, um, most noticeable looking colors. So people will choose a color sometimes because they're just looking for a pleasing color. They're not trying to match anything. And that RGB chart, the small one does a good job. Yeah, I think also too, when you do blend, sublimation lends itself to a lot more complex printing for from screen printing. Screen printing, a lot of times they just do solid colors. You have this whole range of things you can do in sublimation. that's a lot more interesting and dynamic. And so I think using gradients and shades and things is actually is, is a really good move. What I just did is I opened up the clip art browser and I just typed in PAW. And what we're going to do is we're going to swap out with this PAW print right here. So whatever is selected gets replaced. So there's our PAW print. And I'm going to do that in a different color. So let's see here. I'm just going to use my dropper here to sample that color and actually we could just do it that way and we don't need the stars so let's get rid of those guys so i'm just going to ungroup this this is a typical curl thing and we're going to take that and we're going to move this guy over here and why not let's give that that soft bevel effect as well so let's go over here and and add that bevel effect to to this object so we'll just apply that a little bit more 3D. And this little crawl trick, I'm just go over here and just move it. Just move it right here. Right click to copy it. I'm probably gonna mirror it so it's the shadow is on the the same side. And there we've got our fun little design. And, and then here you can go crazy. So if you want to put like a drop shadow on there, you could go and grab an interactive drop shadow and drag a shadow underneath it. You know, you guys can go nuts here. So all kinds of fun stuff that we can do. I'm not really crazy about the shadow, so that's what Control Z is all about. So, Corel is an amazing tool for photos. You don't need Photoshop. You know, people always say, well, "I went and bought Photoshop." Like, why? Because it's a it's a meme that became a an industry standard thing. I'm going to Photoshop this. You can do all the same stuff in Corel Draw. You know, if you want to Photoshop people, I mean, all day long. I don't know. See if I still have this on my system. Hold on. Let's see here. See if I still have this. Oh yeah. Okay, so you, if you wanna do stuff like this, um, my buddy Ben, I did this in CorelDRAW. I put him into the Royal Wedding. I put him into, what else have I done? Oh my gosh. I've done so many different things with Ben. Uh, Mount Rushmore, I put him into Mount Rushmore. There he is. So you can do all that same stuff in CorelDRAW. And all, Corel also comes with a program called Photo Paint. So David, when you knock backgrounds out, do you use bitmap color mask or do you use photo paint in the cutout? I, I traditionally use photo paint. Me too. Yeah, that's how I do it. We'll, we can do a whole nother class on photo editing. But what what I wanted, kind of what we wanted to accomplish today, I wanted to, to show you guys that, you know, you don't have to use all this crazy complicated stuff. In, if you notice when we were in class today, the only tool, curl tools that we use, watch, text tool, we use the pick tool. We use the shape tool a little bit. Uh, we use this tool, actually use the cropping tool as well. Everything else that we're doing is we're just having smart designer do heavy lifting. We don't have to go in and 
and you know because here, here this is david i've been kind of sharing this with with people on the webcast lately lately one of the things that i find is is one of the most dysfunctional things about you know the way our clients interact with their customers in terms of collaborating and creating our work because customers rarely know what they want and so you end up doing all of this back and forth and extra work and we don't even know if they're going to order from us yet and we don't even know if they're going to um, what the minimum order quantity is. So we, 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 you can't be doing all this custom artwork unless you can order that's big enough to justify your time and expense. So one of the things that's been so incredibly handy for our clients is the fact they have access to, you know, thousands of templates. We have 17,000 templates. If one of our clients wants to do a sports banner, one of my customers today is saying they're doing all these graduation banners that people are hanging out in front of their homes because the kids can't go to a physical graduation. And so he took one of our banner templates and actually I can show you the design, it's not really nice. And one of our banner templates and he's name dropping it for all the kids. You know, if you wanted to do, you know, a first responder design or something like that, we have all these different templates and things to choose from. And so the the concept is, you know, we want to steer customers into artwork. We don't want to be going in and doing everything from scratch because it's time consuming and you're not necessarily going to get a return on investment. One of the things that we're really well known for is monograms. Um, you know, we have 3,200 monogram templates. Everybody knows us for the Vine monogram. Uh, which is trademarked now, um, so a circle monogram, but there's so many other cool, just fun, dynamic, and interesting monograms that you can use for sublimation or for, um, you know, vinyl graphics. You can convert these into embroidery. You know, what's, what's so awesome about Corel in our system, it does everything. It does screen printing, it does vinyl graphics, it does rhinestone multi-decoration, it does laser engraving, sublimation, DTG, okay, a white toner, printing, you send out, get it, it's for done. Um, you can do it all. And um, so templates are a really, really big deal. And, you know, not having to go in and start from scratch, having the ability just to go in and pick a theme, modify it, you take a beer design, you turn it into a donut design if you want. So it's it's kind of up to you. One of the things that we're really well known with, and I'll kind of show this, is is our Graphics Plus program. And the way Graphics Plus works is we used to sell Smart Designer and our Rhinestone Designer software. You could just purchase the software. We stopped doing that because people were always on the wrong version. They never had the latest version of the software. Corel updates every year, so they're always out of sync. Microsoft does service patches and all things don't work properly. We have a version of the software. It's called Smart Designer. We rolled the Rhinestone Designer features into that program. It's perpetually updated. You always have the latest version. You always have training and you always have support. And when you join the Graphics Plus membership program, there's two options. Option one is just the software training support, access to webcasts like these that are exclusive or members area. And, but a standard membership is a little bit different because a standard membership, you get an issue every month. And an issue is a graphics collection. And we very specifically did this. So your graphics are in multicolor. So if you're doing digital printing, you have a multicolor version. If you're doing vinyl, you have a simple one color version. If you're doing two color vinyl or screen printing, you have a two color version. And so what we've done is we've provided a mechanism. We even do rhinestone patterns and embroidery files. We've created a mechanism so that your customers can pick out artwork. And the way we do that, David, I don't think I've shown you this yet, is this is such a cool technology, is we have, you can embed these, these issues into your website. And so these, this is a link from our members area that allows our customers to share and collaborate on these issues. And so what, we, what you can do is if you click on the catalog, there's two catalogs. One version of the catalog is for the end user, for your customer, and it has just the designs. And then the other version's for you, it has all the other extras. So this is the, the one for you. And so your customer can flip through here, they can see all the cool. designs and processes on different substrates, it's all color coded, everything's numbered, so they can tell you which design they like. And so I always kind of say it like this, when when you, when you most people go to the grocery store, they have a list and they know vaguely what they want. And they go to the aisle, hopefully it's stocked, and they go to the, they want canned uh, beans, you go to the canned vegetable aisle, you cruise down the aisle, you, you kind of peruse the beans, you find the one you want, um, the, it's, it's at the right price, it's the, you do French cut versus regular beans, you maybe want organic, you throw it in the cart, you check out. That's the way graphics should be. You should be able to direct your clients to ideas, they should be able to pick out the ideas, tell you what they want, 
you go into your smart designer software, quickly localize it and create it, kind of like what we did with that scrubs design. That's the efficient way of doing artwork. And it's also a way that you prospect. So our clients that are Graphics Plus members, these catalogs have a fundamental part of how they market their business. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here to the share link and I'm gonna click on, click on copy URL and on the live webcast, I'm just gonna chat this catalog link in here. This is how you would do this in an email campaign. Right here is your, hyper, your, your HTML code for embedding the thumbnail of this catalog into your website. Right here is all of your Facebook embedding and all your social media embeds for sharing this catalog online. It's all bookmarked. So the end user version ends right here. The one for you keeps going. So it's got the embroidery files in there. It's got rhinestone files and rhinestone templates. It's got all the clip art, all keyword searchable in Smart Designer. Um, it's got um, fonts. We do new fonts every single month. This last month we did these uh, Marvel Captain America type fonts in here that look like superhero fonts. Um, something that's really popular is all these home decor fonts with all these handwritten script letters. So that, that's how we do business today. We, you join the membership either with or without graphics, um, and then you can pick out your graphics collections and then any, any add-ons that you might find that are appealing to you, like our embroidery module or our vinyl cutting module. And then, of course, you buy a, a Sawgrass printer from Condi Systems with an ink set and wonderful training, and you've got a business in a box, right, David? Yes. There you go. So what we're going to do now, is anything else you'd like to add to have in on the recording, David? So um, we, right now we have a, um, a great coupon that's out there and um, trying to remember what the coupon number is. Let me see if I got it right in there. But uh, it's an awesome, it's a $25 off coupon and um, you can use it every day. Um, let's see. Oh, it's CPN. So Charlie Paul Newman hyphen Big Cat. So Charlie Paul Newman hyphen Big Cat. Um, the uh, we're running specials today on the SG800, which is the bigger sawgrass printer. So um, the the best deals ever. Um, the new printers from Sawgrass will be out at the end of the month. Uh, New printers are great, of course, um, but the printers we've had for the last 15 years have all been good. If you're looking for a bigger printer, the Epson F570 is a 24 inch printer, awesome. Looking for heat presses, be glad to help. If you need white toner help, great. But basically, if you're doing sublimation today, and let's say you're not a Condi client or whatever, we absolutely can help you do better. We have tremendous resources here. For instance, free resources like our pricing spreadsheets to help you um, dial in what your pricing strategy should be. Um, we have cost sheets that help you sort of understand where your cost is. Um, we have tremendous um, background pattern artworks at condidesign.com. So Condi Design, check out those. Um, those are both raster and vector um, art packs. They're low cost. So, you know, our business model is to hit those three P's that I mentioned earlier. And I would say that really we're here to, to help you do better um, in every part. Uh, we're, help, we're here to push you out of your comfort zone. Um, Craig, isn't that one of the big things out there is people get into their comfort zone, and it really limits their ability to serve their clients and to make money. And guess what? Not staying in your comfort zone is a recipe for losing your clients, isn't it? Yeah, and you know, it's interesting, you know, with all the things that are going on in the, in the, in the world right now, um, our business is absolutely booming, and we're, we're trying to put our arms around it and figure out what it is, and, and the best we can tell is this. People, you know, have time now to invest in the training and all the, you know, people will invest in our system or they get corral draw or get equipment and, you know, life happens, right? So they're very busy and there's a lot going on and they, they can't take that time to properly do training and learn their craft and make samples. People are doing that right now. 
and and the other part of it is we have customers doing these these fundraising um, sites. This is a Mark Heis, This is a, a one of his websites, and every day I go on here, and he's got new designs. And so he's doing these local fundraisers where he'll create a T-shirt graphic. He has a DTG printer. He also has a Condi sublimation system, um, and he'll create a T-shirt graphic for a local business. And he does a revenue share where the local business gets a, you know, say half of the pro, pro, proceeds. He keeps the other half, and he's so busy right now. He's not, he hasn't even been able to be on the webcast because he's so been so darn busy. I see if he's on here today, um, and he's actually going to do some. Um, uh, he's yeah, Mark's on here today. Uh, I, you know, he did one T-shirt last week. It was a, a graduation. I don't know what the number is on this one so far, but this is a, a promotion that he did on a spring break shirt. And last time I checked, he was at $1,800 in sales just for this this one promotion he did. And he's using an Inksoft website um, to launch these products. So, you know, you have to be planning for the future. What are you gonna do when you come out of this? You need to be training now, you need to be making samples. If you've got your sublimation system and your cutter and you haven't been fired it up and, and making samples, now is the time to be doing that. And I think, uh, purely from a you know business perspective from digital art solutions, I, I think it was a very wise move for us to go to a membership program that was affordable to get people into the family. And we did that back in October. We've widened our reach. Um, we had record signups last week. Um, you can get started with DAS for as little as $50 a month. Um, you spent $99 a month. Guess what you're going to get? You're going to get great new artwork every month automatically distributed to your computer and you're going to be able to direct clients to pick out artwork collaborate th with them get new ideas in front of people and successfully grow your business that's that's what we're all about so i'm going to go ahead and stop the recorded portion of the webcast and open it up for questions because i can see you guys have bombed us so that's that's a good thing all right i'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording